Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a quick harvest of the Burmy Bag Little Mammoth, and then we are going to reset the bag and feed them up. Do some evaluation of the moisture and whatever. But if you hear clicking or wheezing in the background, it's actually not me. It's my little pugs. You may see them going in and out underneath the Burmy Bag as I'm working. All right, let's get set up and have a look. First things first, let's open the bag. Okay. And normally you, what you're going to want to do is you're going to only want to open one side at a time and rescue yourself from dropping both at the same time. So I'm going to reach behind and grab the other half of that zipper. Okay, so now we're just doing one half at a time. If this was a regular uh, Vermi Bag Max, you would only have, you know, one to deal with. But uh, on the Little Mammoth, you actually, because it's, I don't think it's twice the size, but it's quite a bit bigger. Okay, I actually did remember my fork this time. So I'm going to get in there and kind of pull everything out. The goal is to uh, harvest up to right above the zipper here. And I'll show you what I have grabbed out in the amount of time that we've been doing things here. This should not take me more than five minutes uh, to do an entire harvest. Um, I used to have a urban worm bag, and instead of sitting on a little stool comfortably, I would be flat on my back, upside down, underneath the, um, underneath the bag. So this is considerably better ergonomically for me anyway. Um, I am not 21 anymore. So also for this, this is for reference, I'll put the metric on there, but this is 21 inches up off the ground for here. Just as a frame of reference, just in case you're, I'm 5'5", five five, uh, and that's, I'll put the metric for that as well. But this is a good height for me. Maybe if you were super tall, it wouldn't be great, but this is good for me. All right, so I have reached the point where I feel like I should stop, which is right up here. Maybe get a little bit more from around the edge, but if you go too much higher, you risk knocking the entire thing down. Which is not good, because then it'll end up all over the floor and you'll have to reset the whole bag. Okay, so then it's just easy to shake everything off of this little lid here zip it back up and then we're gonna move over to the other side and do that harvest okay here we are on the other side I have just taken this mortar tray and slid it over on the on the bottom here and I do have a video of me making the stand here and putting together the the bag for the first time so I'll link that at the end if you want to see they basically on the vermi bag website they give you what you need to, the directions to make this. I just found a bit of a snail, so I pulled that out in case, yeah, that's not good. I don't know where they come from. It concerns me that maybe there's food that I'm growing that has snail eggs on it. I just don't know. So this side seems to be a little more damp, but I am not seeing any worms at all in this. There's still some unfinished compost like seeds and rinds, but I will sift this out and get it wet again and put it back in the top. You could just use this as is and throw this right in the garden. You don't, you don't have to go to the lengths I do uh, to make sure that the worms eat all their food. Um, so you can just use this straight up in the garden. It's not necessary to go through sifting but if you do want to sift my favorite sifters are in the Amazon links below okay I do like the claw to get the bulk the bulk of it out but I can't really feel where I'm at under the bag and I want to be right about there and I am concerned that if I did it entirely with the claw that I would overdo it and miss my mark and then everything come falling down all right, so this is all reasonably dry, so that's great. 
it shouldn't take too long for it to dry. I'm gonna zip this back up. The zippers on the Vermi bag are 200% better than on the Urban Worm bag. I went through, I, I murdered the zippers within a year. In fact, I don't think I had the Vermi bag, or I bought the Vermi bag probably about a year after I bought the um, Urban Worm bag because it just completely broke apart down here as well as the top. But it's handmade by a guy, so instead of being like, you know, in a factory. So let's, uh, I'll take you up top here and I'll show you resetting it. Okay, here we are afterwards, after the harvest. You can see that there's still some ginger skin in here, some pumpkin seeds, avocado shells, and when I go ahead and sift this, all this will get put back in. You can see it's, it's really dry. It's almost siftable at this point. And if I had to guess, there's probably not more than one or two worms in this, because obviously this is not a moisture the worms want to hang out in. But that is one of the benefits of the vermi bag is that the harvest kind of auto dries as it gets lower and lower and the worms move right along with it. So that's why they call it a continuous flow through system. So sort of like a wedge, only vertical. Okay, here we are back up top again and I'm going to unzip the whole thing. Take off the little cover that I keep on it to keep the moisture up. Looks like we have... Uh, a bunch of things growing on top here, but that's not what we're looking at right now. We're going to reset the bottom of the bag, and I actually did remember to bring a mop handle with me to go down there and go along the sides and knock this down. I probably took about three to five gallons out. We'll measure that after a while but you wanna make sure that everything is resting back on the bottom. Speaking from experience, if you don't have a pole or something, it's gonna be much more difficult if you have to reach your arm in there. Feel the side of the bag. Still feels like I have a little bit over here to go. Okay. And we're good. So what we have here, it has shrunk down by probably about six inches. And then let me get you turned around and we'll uh, evaluate the, what the bag's been doing and get them fed up for today. Okay, here we are back on top. The uh, moisture has stayed great. Uh, that little plastic cover is the same thing I've been using on blue underneath. And it's been working great up here since I've been checking on the bin probably once a week and checking on the moisture to see if I need to add more. I did add about a gallon two weeks ago. It's been a month since we looked in on these guys. Uh, it looks like they've eaten some things. Looks like the fast, slow food of the apples, uh, the ones that were partially rotten or, or gone, and the ones that were pretty, pretty uh, intact seem to still be around. I can still smell the apple. There's a few leftovers there. Looks like they're starting to work on the rubber tree plant leaves. So it does look like they could use a good measure of bedding and food today. You know, so that's what I'm always preaching is do your evaluations first before you decide to um, feed or add moisture. You know, you can't, there's no hard fast rule about it. Basically you have to look at it, say yes it does or does not need food, and then go from there. So I'm kind of just Working through this a little bit, looking for any uh, wires or tags or anything. I do put pretty much anything that um, dies in my plant collection in here. 
or trimmings. So sometimes there are tags or bonsai wires. So you, in case you're wondering why on earth would there be wire, um, that's, that's pretty much why. All right, so it looks like we're, now as I'm kind of getting halfway down, I'm probably gonna add a little bit more water because the water is okay in some places and not okay in others. So that is, needs to be corrected because I generally only look in this bin about every three to four weeks. Um, yep, that's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the old food right there in the middle. Kind of spread that out. That's already been, you know, partially deconstructed by the worms. Look over on this side. The goal is to keep all the food at the top and that way when you know you do the harvest at the bottom then you're not running into very much food or worms and you can you know have a lot less to I don't know have to deal with at the end all right so since there's no worm ball or cute worms to look at I'm just gonna go ahead and get them their food for today all right, so we have some cabbage that's gone bad. Got some pumpkin. Uh, believe it or not, I think that's hummus. There might even be some noodles in here. Let's get them a good amount of bedding. So that is about five to six gallons of bedding, uh, prepared paper bedding that I'm putting on top here. And it is super wet, so it was the bottom of the barrel, literally. Uh, so I'm not gonna add more water. If you wanna see how I make my prepared bedding, I will link that at the end as well. If you want to see more about the African Nightcrawlers, I will put their playlist right over here. And YouTube thinks that if you've seen all of the other things I've been talking about, you're gonna wanna watch this. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.